Welcome back to A Drop of Happy, the podcast arm to my blog, lightbee.com, where we focus on carefree, stress well, light and lively living while loving and reviewing entertainment art tidbits. I am Wanda, your host, and I always like to remind people the main thing that we like to focus on is stress management, stress management tips, and my focus is really using allowing you to use what you've got to help manage what you've got going on in your life. So I always like to emphasize it's not about reinventing the wheel, but also about tying the arts and our creative side and our imagination and being mindful of that and how it plays a part into our overall wellness and stress management. Um, And on the part about reviews and stuff, I've been watching a lot of stuff. Uh, I did The Woman King. That's up. I I blogged about it and I also did the podcast. But um, man, there's a lot of stuff that I need to catch up on and write up that um, I've been watching and I have opinions and thoughts and I want to share. But I, I always look up and find these interesting articles and I want to share one that I found with you guys. Um, I also think of myself as a curator of tidbits and things that are going up on out there in relation to stress management. But hear me out. This one, when you hear the title, you're going to be like, what? But this was a really, really interesting article written in uh, SciTech Daily. Uh, it was published actually yesterday. Um, who wrote this? Oh, by Ivan Arrow, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And it was published yesterday. And the title, there's some technical parts that I'm probably going to skip for you guys, but Viruses may be watching you, lying in wait before multiplying and killing. First of all, can we just, uh, I mean, why you got to be so extra just right there in a title? Dang. Like we don't got enough going on for you to come out just out the gate. Strong like that. Let me. Viruses may be watching you, lying in wait before multiplying and killing you. Okay, calm down. Dang. And in the picture, y'all know I be watching my little sci-fi movies. Um, I will definitely put the link, include the link, but the picture is very intimidating. (laughs) I mean, I get it. They're viruses or they're bugs or whatever, but you you legit gotta make them looking like somebody, something out my nightmares. Okay. So let's get into this article. You know, I like doing articles that I find interesting, giving my little commentary. So viruses may be watching you. Some microbes lie in wait until their hosts unintentionally gives them the signal to start multiplying and kill them. For clarification purposes, um, we the host. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny. It's not funny. Y'all know I'd be definitely laughing inappropriately. It's not funny, but I, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. We the host. So what that mean? Okay. So back in the article, especially after more than two years of COVID ni- of the COVID-19 pandemic, many people picture a virus as a nasty spike ball essentially a mindless killer that gets into a cell and hijacks its machinery to create a gazillion copies of itself before bursting out. For many viruses, including the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, the mindless killer moniker is essentially true. But wait, there's more. (laughs) However, There is more to virus biology than meets the eye. Uh, 
A suitable illustration is HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. HIV is a retrovirus that does not immediately go on a killing spree when it enters the cell. Instead, it integrates itself into your chromosomes and chills, waiting for the proper opportunity to command the cell to make copies of it and burst out to infect other immune cells and eventually cause AIDS. So it, this is a good example, right? It just goes up in there and makes itself a nice little happy home, like chilling, rearranging stuff and, and, and just getting all comfortable until some indication, some signal, some whatever that says, yes, I am ready to pounce. Exactly what moment HIV is waiting for is not clear as it still an area of active study. Pause. Um, isn't it crazy? Like coronavirus still going to have years and years to study HIV. You've been studying forever, but it's still like you're scratching the tip of the iceberg. And it's very interesting that they talked about HIV because According to HIV.org, approximately 1.2 million people in the U.S. have HIV. About 13% of them don't know it and need testing. So just a side note, as a nurse, as a health stress slash stress management coach, um, y'all need to be safe out there because you can be infected and it can be making a happy home, chilling, getting comfortable, and you don't even know it, which does cause increase the spread. So that's just a sidebar because, you know, since they use that as an example, and I think it's a good example of a virus that's just up in there making itself homey, unbeknownst to the host. So. Let me go back. Exactly what moment HIV is waiting for is not clear as it is still an area of study. However, research on other viruses has long indicated that these pathogens can be quite thoughtful about killing. Y'all, you, who would have thought, who would have imagined that they not just up in there, just all gang ba- gangbusters. No, they are thoughtful. Let me get back. Of course, viruses cannot think the way you and I do. But as it turns out, evolution has bestowed them with some pretty elaborate decision making mechanisms. For example, some viruses will choose to leave the cell they have been residing in if they detect DNA damage. Not even viruses, it appears, like to stay on a sinking ship. Pause. You know, this reminds me of the movie World War Z with Brad Pitt, which I just saw a couple weeks ago. And um, the main thing about the virus, well, it wasn't a virus, it was the zombies, if you want to kind of make an analogy to the zombies or virus, which they kind of were. But anyway, um, they would not attack people and eat people and turn them into zombies if they had like a deadly infection or a deadly disease or something that they knew, okay, we're not going to be able to spread and we're not going to be able to whatever. So that's what it reminded me. It reminded me of, of World War Z, which was a really good movie, by the way. I was disappointed that they did not make a second one. But then I'm like, well, what's the second one going to be like? Like what? Okay. But this is what that reminded me of. Uh, So the viruses do that too, right? For over two decades, my laboratory has been studying the molecular biology of bacteriophages or phages for short. The viruses that infect bacteria Recently, my colleagues and I demonstrated that phages 
can listen for key cellular signals to help them in their decision making. Even worse, they can use the cell's own ears to do the listening for them. Now, let me just pause here and say, um, it's basically saying that, yeah, they can use your own body against you. Now, um, phages aren't the same as, as, uh, viruses, right? Um, but let's continue reading. Escaping DNA damage. If the enemy of your enemy is your friend, phages are certainly your friends. They control bacteria populations in nature and clinicians are increasingly using them to treat bacterial infections that do not respond to antibiotics. I'm going to pause here, which is kind of exciting to read about this because as a nurse, you learn and you know, if you've worked in um, a hospital setting, right, that uh, due to the like overuse of antibiotics, that a some antibacter- uh, antibiotic resistant um, bugs are cropping up, right? And, and if we keep abusing antibiotics the way that we do, and you know we do between from the food, from the prescription, we do, uh, we're going to have more antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria and things like that, that, uh, come up. So this is kind of exciting on that end of it. Um, that's just a side note, <laughs> me and my, my nerdiness, right? Okay. So the best studied phages. Okay. So here's, so here's where they get a little technical and I definitely encourage you to read the article cause it gets, it gets a little, um, it gets a little technical. Uh, I'm just going to read some of the highlights. Okay. So they're talking about a particular um, phage called phage phage. I'm saying phage. It might be phage. Bacteria phage. Bacteria phage. Bacteria phage. Phage phage. However, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, upon entering this, the bacterial cell, lambda, which is a bacterial phage phage, <laughs> decides whether to replicate and kill the cell outright like most viruses do or to integrate itself into the cell's chromosome as HIV does. If the latter lambda harmlessly replicates with its host each time the bacteria divides. Now, uh, However, like HIV, Lambda is not just sitting idle. It uses a special protein. Okay, here's when it gets, here's where it gets a little uh, more clinical and technical. Um, But it's just saying that it's basically sitting there monitoring your body and your cell. Um, For example, if the DNA has any damage, it'll poop. It'll jump ship. If the bacterium D- DNA gets compromised, that's bad news for Lambda. Um, that's, that's within it. Now I'm just paraphrasing y'all because they, they start to get a little technical and I'm trying not to get bogged down on that. A DM, damaged DNA leads straight to evolution's landfill because it's useless for Lambda that needs it to reproduce. So Lambda turns on its replication genes, makes copies of itself and bursts out of the cell to look for uh, other undamaged cells to infect. Now in this case, again, this is not bad because this is helping to keep the bacteria spread down, right? Um, The article goes on to talk about the intuitiveness of the different types of bacterial phages, phages, <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing that, of their intuitiveness to like, no, okay, I'm going to just chill because they have different ones, right? I'm going to just chill and I'm going to be like, I'm going to wait for the bacteria to build before I go on the attack, right? So it's all saying this to say that, okay, th- these bacteria are not dumb. They're not just sitting here. They there 
but they got a plan. They got a plan and they are not just chilling um, uh, in, in your body. They, they got a plan and they wait in. And so, like I said, it goes to like technical, technical stuff. But then um, as the article moves on, uh, a good question is why should you care about the counterintelligence ops run by bacterial viruses? While bacteria are very different from people, the viruses that infect them are not that different from the viruses that infect humans. Pretty much every single trick played by phage phages <laughs> has later been shown to be used by viruses that infect humans. If a phage can tap bacterial communication lines, why wouldn't a human virus tap yours? So they kind of explain all that to be like, okay, these things do it. But guess what? Viruses do that too. Viruses do that that enter your body too, which is like kind of fascinating. You've probably never given it much thought and that's fine. That's why we talking about it. And just give me a minute or two or three to tie in, like to bring it home. Okay. So far, scientists don't know what human viruses could be listening for if they hijack these lines, but they are plenty of conceivable options. I believe, like phages, human viruses could potentially be able to count their numbers to strategize, detect cell growth and tissue formation, and even monitor immune responses. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. And even monitor immune responses. For these for now, these possibilities are only speculation, but scientific investigation is underway to investigate. Having viruses listening to your cells, private conversations is not the rosiest of pictures, but it's not without a silver lining. What's the silver lining, friend? What is it? As intelligence agencies around the world know quite well, counterintelligence only works when it's covert. Once the deck once detected, the system can be verily, can be very easily, Lord, can very easily be exploited to feed misinformation to your enemy. Similarly, I believe that the future antiviral therapies may be able to combine conventional artillery like antivirals that prevent viral replication with information warfare trickery such as the virus believes the cell it is in belongs to a different tissue. Uh, so it's interesting. They're going to use this research to obviously to help uh, find antivirals that could stop the spread of disease. But the reason why I wanted to read this like super scary article uh, is to circle back and bring it back to stress management and bring it back to how like these things are actively waiting for our immune system to be compromised. Okay. And your health and your well-being are a big factor to contribute to uh, your resilience and, and just your overall uh, handle on life. So one of the things that we talk about is, um, uh, keeping yourself strong and healthy and all that good stuff. But guess what contributes to that stress that's left unchecked, right? Like stress that's left unchecked can be a situation where anything can get exacerbated. Like, uh, a mental disorder can get exacerbated. Um, a genetic predisposition, can get exacerbated, um, pending that it has the right conditions. And stress, unchecked, turns into chronic stress that you do not deal with, can definitely weaken your immune system and create a landscape to where these 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 microbes and these invaders that have been chilling 
boom, they now activate. They're like, oh, oh, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this uh, um, situation to be just right. And boom. So how can you deal with this? How can you help? How can you um, combat this? You know, I talk so many times. We've talked before about how knowing your values can help with stress because it helps you make better decisions. It helps you get with yourself. It kind of grounds you. But how about just um, reverting back, and I've mentioned this before, to changing your mindset about stress so that you can actually utilize. Because when you are stressed, when you find yourself in a stressful situation, when you find yourself having that fight or flight response, right? Um, it's because you're, you have to activate to do something. There's something going on, right? That's causing that. So it's giving you the tools that you need to handle whatever that situation is. So how do you do that? You, you stay vigilant about the root cause of why you're stressed out. You stay mindful. You, you do, uh, stress assessments, um, you assess what you want in your life, what's going on in your life, so that when something happens that you have to respond to, you have to react to, it's not this gloom and doom, oh my God, I'm stressed. It's okay, I've been alerted that something's up and there's a reason why I'm stressed and this is allowing me and giving me the tools to handle this situation. So, you can't ignore the shit that's going on in your life and think this is just going to go away because then your stress is going to build because you're not handling it correctly. And by correctly, it's not the way I say it's not the way what it's the correctly for what your body needs, for what you need. Right. Um, you're letting it carry on. And then so therefore you're going to let the stress carry on. You're going to ignore it. Um, your hair is going to be falling out. Who, who, who knows? Um, and then boom, you're going to create the just right environment for the, the bacteria that's chilling up in you, the virus that's viruses that are potentially chilling up in you, these little bugs that are just lying in wait to, to activate, to burst, to multiply, to do whatever. But also again, like I mentioned, anything that you're, uh, genetically predisposed to, um, any like underlying mental issues, those can get exacerbated. Um, so many, it has such far reaching effects. So that's why, you know, I thought this article was really interesting and tied perfectly into, uh, what I think you need to do. Right. And that's being mindful of, of where you're at, you know, stress wise. And if you don't have any stress, man, that's great. It's not realistic. And maybe you are just great at handling it and you're just aware Then you need to be a stress will ambassador and teach others how to do it. Because let me tell you, the statistics are not pretty. And maybe you really think about stress in differently as far as, okay, this is not the gloom and doom, the, the end all. This is happening so I can activate and move and handle whatever it is that I need to handle in my life. Um, so I just thought this was a really good article. I will definitely post it in the podcast. So if you care to read it and read the little technical, they have a couple of videos in there as well. Um, it's just interesting stuff, uh, but to really keep mindful that we have to not allow the perfect environment be created so that they can come and take over. It's like, y'all remember Transformers? I think it was the second one, which I don't really remember the name of it, but when, um, the fallen, somebody, one of them came stop, and they were trying to, to terraform or change the structure uh, to, of the earth, like destroy it so that they can create the environment for 
for, for the Decepticons, well, they, that, that, they were a virus. They were a pest. It's kind of like the same thing. So we have to make sure that we fight that and we work on our well-being. We work on our health so that... So we can try, we can work on fending that. So our immune system is not compromised. That's why I wanted to talk about this article. Just a few things. And I am going to have um, a a free, uh, like what is stress guide, which, um, and I'm also going to offer some other little stuff that will hopefully help you guys. Um kind of be a little bit more focused and intentional on that. So before I end, we will end with an affirmation. I don't remember. It's been a while, so I don't remember what I did last time. Uh, what I do last time? Oh, 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 okay. So this one, which I really like, So as we move to the affirmation portion of the programming, as we come to the end, (laughs) um, I just want you all to just kind of relax, relax your shoulders, like, you know, do the, do, do the little head spin from side to side. Oh, oh my God. Uh, I don't realize how much I needed to do that and take a nice deep breath with me. We'll do it one more time. Oh, gosh, that felt good. And the affirmation is, I have a voice that matters. Say it one more time with me. I have a voice that matters. All right, go out there and be stress well ambassadors for somebody else in your life. Uh, remember to check out, come back and check out and share and all that good stuff. And um, as you go out there, remember to live light and stress well. <laughs>